Dobro jutro svima! Hi everyone, good morning! I am Maja Blue and today's video is gonna be about differences between Serbian, Bosnian and Croatian. So today I'm not gonna talk about if Serbian, Bosnian and Croatian are different languages because I think that's a very long debate. You could talk about how it is phrased politically, linguistically, yeah, I'm not gonna get into that, but what I'm going to do is show you that yes, there are some similarities, but also there are some differences between languages. And those differences are not limited only by borders. So they are, there are also the variations in the countries themselves. So I'm not gonna be able to give you all the answers today, but you're gonna get a taste about what is living in ex-Yugoslavia. So a disclaimer, I am from Serbia. I was born and raised in the north, which is um, the autonomous province of Vojvodina. So I'm obviously also biased um, about what are these things that, um, uh, those differences that you pronounce or uh, that you have on the syntactic level, morphological, um, lexical, so on and so forth. However, my mom is from Bosnia. She is from a town named uh, Sanski Most and she adjusted her dialect to, or her language to the one we use in Vojvodina. Um, but I do go uh, to Bosnia almost every year, so I kind of have an idea of what it is, but still, um, I'm actually really looking forward to your comments, considering that there are some people over here that are from these areas, or their parents are the, uh, from these areas, or they know someone who's from the Balkan Peninsula, um, then I would really like to know your experience and uh, your comments, and um, I would just see what kind of variation have you Found and also is everything that I'm telling you true because some of the things I've obviously um, taken from my experience but some of the things I've taken from um, online sources or any type of sources, written sources. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the script. And I didn't know that in Croatia you don't use the Cyrillic script. I was blown away. So based on uh, what I've read and heard, in Serbia you use both the Cyrillic and the Latin alphabet, um, and, but mostly for official things, official documents, you use the Cyrillic script. Um, however, um, this varies individually. We learn both scripts, first the Cyrillic one and second, the second one is the Latin one, but it's like literally year to year, like it's, it's not like we learn uh, the Latin script way later. So we know both of them, we're proficient in both of them, and we use, depending on who it is, when I was in Serbia, I usually used the Cyrillic script. And the reason for that was just because it was just like, it looked nicer. <laughs> That's the only reason. Um, when I was writing the, um, using the Latin script, it just wasn't as nice and I, I didn't use it that often. Um, but then I started learning English and then it was really, really difficult taking notes and switching from the Latin and the Cyrillic alphabet. So I switched to the Latin one. Um, and I guess I'm just gonna have to accept that it's just, you know, I, I, my way of writing is just not beautiful. In Bosnia, however, well, Bosnia is really complicated actually. You're gonna notice throughout this video that I'm just like struggling with Bosnia because um, there are so many variations. So technically they're taught both uh, the Cyrillic and the Latin alphabet. But you're gonna find variations and some people over there don't know the Cyrillic alphabet, they just know um, the Latin one. And as I already said, in Croatia it's only the Latin alphabet. So no, not all Slavs know the Cyrillic alphabet. And then another interesting thing that I noticed, and this is something that I haven't really read anywhere, is that it's the transcription. So in Serbian, whenever you have a foreign word, you're gonna transcribe it as you pronounce it in Serbian. That also means for proper nouns. So for example, if you have an, some name, um, let's say Justin Bieber, you're going to write it down in the way we write it down. So no with J, but actually with the j that we have, so d uh, or the j. That means in Serbian, Justin Bieber will be Justin Bieber. In Croatia, as far as I know, they do not transcribe it, they just copy the name as it is in its original. And as for Bosnia, I don't know, type it. I don't know, let me know what happens in Bosnia. Then we have some differences in terms of phonology. So sometimes in a word, um, there's only one sound that is different. So um, let's say in Bosnian and Serbian, you say for, pota for potato, you say uh, krompir. 
and in Croatian it's krumpir. So as you can see, very similar, you just say, use o in Serbian and Bosnian and u in Croatian. But it's not that Bosnian and Serbian pattern all the time, of course. So uh, you have words like uh, salary, in Serbian it is plata, and in Croatian and Bosnian it is plaća. Some other words that are different, for example, are ear, and you can say uvo in Serbian, but you can also say uho. In Bosnian Croatian you usually use uho. Coffee, for example, a very important word in our area, is um, in Serbian it's called kafa. Um, however, in Bosnian you can say kava or kafa. In Croatian you usually use kava. And then we get to the point where it gets really confusing because you would think that okay because they're different countries they're completely different from each other but actually we have a thing that is called narečje and i don't really know how to translate this it's not really a dialect it's a way of pronunciation and it differs depending on regions. So I will insert a map here. This is from Wikipedia. I don't know how accurate it is, but I think it's pretty accurate. Let me know if it's not accurate because <laughs> I want to know more. I want to learn more. Um, and basic what it is, is we have uh, ekavica, ikavica and jekavica, which means that in uh, different words, there's a slightly different pronunciation of some parts. So I will use an example that I've been using throughout my whole life. It was like a, I don't know, I was mind blown when I heard this, when I went to Bosnia. I was like, this is how you say it in Bosnia? I didn't know that. Um, so it's uh, milk. And in Serbian, uh, because it's usually ekavica, um, you would say mleko. Um, and then in um, some other areas where there is ijekavica, which is one part of Bosnia and also one part of Croatia, you say mlieko. And ikavica, I think it's mostly in Croatia, um, in some parts, not, not um, a lot, but I think there is also, they pronounce it somewhere in Bosnia, I'm not sure, again, uh, that's very difficult to track. But um, you would say mliko. So as you can see, um, ekavica, iekavica, and ikavica translate into mleko, mlieko, mliko. Okay, and if you hear something, this is uh, my vacuuming robot, um, Mimi, and she's cleaning right now, and I'm just gonna have to endure until the end. <sighs> Amazing. And then we get to the most interesting part, which is actually the part where there are so many differences, and this is this is where you will find uh, differences in between countries and within countries. And this is on the lexical level. So let's say, for example, that you have a word which is tomato. In Serbian, you would say paradise, but in Croatian, you would say rajčica. However, in some areas of Croatia, for example, Istria, you can say pomodoro. Then we have a word like train, which is Voz in Serbian and Vlak in Croatian. And in Bosnian it is this time like Serbian. Voz. Music in Serbian is Muzika. In Croatian, Glasba. In Bosnian, both Muzika and Glasba. And then one really interesting thing is, and I feel sad that I have never learned this, is name of the months. In Serbia you just use Monday. <laughs> She is January, February, Januar, Februar, Mart, April, May. In Croatian, you use words um, or Old Slavic or Slavonic words that actually describe what happens in that month. So, for example, April in Serbian, April, is Travan in Croatian. Then also some names, like names for countries or languages. If you want to say Spanish language in Serbian, it is Spanski jezik, and in Croatian, it's Spanjolski jezik. In Bosnia, this time you say it as in Serbia, Spanski. Then when it comes to some morphological differences, there are of course many, but some of those that I will uh, present are uh, the endings of verbs. So, for example, if you want to say to control um, in Serbian and Croatian, which is actually, I think, derived from German, kontrolieren, <laughs> then um, in Serbian you would say uh, kontrolisati and in Croatian kontrolirati. If you want to say um, I will read, which is čitaću in Serbian, and it is written together. In Croatian, it is written separately, and you would say čitaću. And lastly, we have syntactic differences, and this is something that I found very fascinating because it's more of a, of a frequency difference, and 
Even if you say both of these, they're not gonna be incorrect, at least not in Serbia, but you would notice that there is someone is not from the same area as you. So if you use modal verbs, for example, in Serbian, you would usually use the construction to and then the verb, uh, which is da something. But in Croatian, usually you focus on using uh, the infinitive. So for example, you want to say, I have to work tomorrow. Um, in Serbian, it would be sutra moram da radim. However, in Croatian, you can say, Sutra moram raditi. And as far as I know in Bosnia, both constructions are okay, but I am interested to hear you what you have to say, in which areas, which option do you actually prefer. Okay, and these are all of my pointers. Again, I want to know what you have to say and I want to know what you've heard, what you've experienced, what you've used and what you've read. And let me know in the comments below. I'm really, really looking forward to learning something new about my language and languages that surround my country. Um, and yeah, stay tuned. See you next week or in a couple of days. Um, have a nice day. Bye.